everyone. Welcome to the Amplifying Scientific Innovation video podcast. I'm your host, Dr. Sophia Onoye Onye, founder and CEO of the Sophia Consulting Firm, a WeBank certified life science marketing and communications consultancy that was established in New York City with the goal of amplifying scientific innovation. The goal of this podcast is to showcase the importance of science advocacy, health equity, and influential leadership through conversations with senior life science leaders who share a unique leadership journey, corporate vision, and industry outlook. My guest today is Ms. Christine von Raysfield, founder and CEO of People with Empathy, a platform to connect key stakeholders in healthcare in order to improve the quality of life for patients and care partners. I connected with Christine on Twitter through our shared interest in the CNS Summit, which is a community of innovators and industry leaders, such as the late great Metadata CEO, Glenn DeVert, and the conference's chief curator and chairman, Dr. Amil Kalali, who are not afraid to challenge the status quo. Moreover, I'm a huge advocate of female entrepreneurship and patient advocacy. It is truly a pleasure to welcome you to the show, Christine. Well, I am so glad to be here. I just wish that this could have been in person instead I know. of video. <laughs> I know. Well, one day coming soon, change is on the way. Yeah. Um, so I usually start the podcast with the same question, which is, what is your definition of scientific innovation? So can I tell you a little story behind sure. that? Sure. So when I was when I was a kid, I was always sick and, and school was not a, a big focus for me. You know, science, especially science classes were of no interest at all to me. And it wasn't until later in life when I started to realize that science and technology and, and things that I saw out here, I grew up in, I grew up in the Silicon Valley, so a little bit different of an environment here. But I saw all of these things that could potentially help me. And so for me, scientific innovation is, I guess, really it's, it's using our future technologies and what's out there to improve things, to improve our quality of life. For me, it really is, you know, we're going to talk about data later, but data has been a huge part of me really changing my own care and my own quality of life. Wow. Uh, thank you for sharing that impactful story. Now, I guess it ties into my next question, really, which is what inspired your, your passion for breaking silos in healthcare? So I think that was a, a little bit of a, a lot of messes, right? <laughs> it really was. You know, I, as a patient experience, I have multiple rare disease. Um, I have a chronic autoimmune condition, lupus, as well as multiple others. And for me, what I found was just really no, I guess, no holistic care for me on any aspect, right? Whether it was support with nonprofits, whether it was family support, um, physician care, right? I have so many diseases that we've narrowed it down to different specialists who then pass it on to the next. And so between that and growing up in an, in an area where it's a lot of tech and finance and real estate, um, I was kind of lost for connections. So really just looking for people to kind of put the pieces together in my own life that really wow. just spawned into more. <laughs> wow. Well, well, thank you again. I think your stories are so incredibly inspiring. That was one of the reasons why I knew I absolutely wanted to have you on the show. And so now I'm curious to know what are some of the unique challenges that patient advocates, advocates like you face and what coping strategies have you adopted over the years? Oh, God, there's so many. Um, I think sometimes as a patient, we look at people as uh, weak or needing help. Yeah. And so yeah. originally, I think that's what put me in a huge box, right? That idea that I was a burden on people and that there really wasn't much I could do. And so after years of, you know, listening to other people, I finally realized that I knew myself best and mm -hmm. everything that I could do, I was going to do. I, I had kind of a lack of support as far as the family side, which, you know, everybody talks about how amazing support is, but I also think that lack of support is made me what pushed further. I think if I had been in an environment where people supported me and just told me that what I was going through was fine, I might have accepted that. And yeah. so I didn't. So. Yeah. 
But, you know, it's the lack of support that you experienced that was also integral to you creating this company, people with empathy. And I can't wait for us to get into that discussion. But then you also sort of mentioned data a few minutes ago. So I'm going to bring you back to data. Yeah. So I'm a big fan of the data empowered patient. Can you talk us through on how data are being leveraged to improve the patient experience from access and quality perspective? Sure, I can talk about it on a couple different levels. So my own personal data, you know, I'm part of Stanford's human wide program. And in that program, they gave us pharmacogenomics, which for those who don't know, it's really a test that kind of measures how you metabolize different compounds and drugs. And we found out through that test that I was a slow metabolizer of certain mm -hmm. compounds, which caused damage to myself. You know, I have three joint replacements and toxic encephalopathy, um, but I'm also a fast metabolizer for other compounds. So CYPK5 is something that's in opioids that really makes it work for people. And I'm a fast metabolizer of that. So really making them like Tic Tacs, you know, I could take as many as I want and it just ran through my body. And so I at one point received dilaudid for pain and it was this amazing drug, right? It took away the pain, but didn't affect my brain. But when I would go back and, and ask for it, they would tell me no. This is a highly addictive drug. We cannot give it to people, but now it's in my charts. And, and so that data, that information of how I just metabolize drugs has trained, changed my whole treatment of care. And then on a larger platform, I think it's collective data. You know, I think as patients, we're not knowledgeable about what our data is or what it's worth. And most people don't even know how to interpret it because it's something that you can't touch, right? We need something tangible or a real explanation to, to know something. So I think I tell people my data is like my song, you know, and, and that gives to people and, and we need to get back from that data. But what I also think is people need to be informed on the collective value of that data. So me alone is not gonna help solve the world problems, but me combined with everyone else like me could. I just love how you had seen up my next questions because you find a way to weave it in effortlessly into the conversation. Because my next two questions are around collective intelligence and collaborative action. And they, they are at the core of what you do. So can you pro please provide us with a top line overview of ongoing work at People with Empathy, especially as it relates to one of my favorite <laughs> Of course. And, and one of the key slogans that I always like to say is only through collective intelligence and collaborative leadership that we'll find viable solutions that work for us all. And so what I've really found is that collaborative effort, right? I know that we, we're siloed in this industry. And I like to tell people that, you know, whether you work in clinical trials or, I don't know, consent or care or wherever it is, you may go home at the end of the day, but all of those things still play into my life. Right, and right. so we really need to look holistically at people and really at empowering patient voices. But I also find it very difficult to empower patients sometimes when they're stuck in a certain mindset. And so uh, at People with Empathy, we're really gearing towards trying to educate nonprofits and really inform people of the value of their data. We're also looking at building um, some programs to really work with industry on on finding out how to work with patient communities, you know, and how we can utilize these nonprofit groups that are already out there to really find solutions for us. Wow. Well, again, extremely well said. I'm very inspired by how you took some of the challenges that you have faced as a patient, as a patient advocate, advocate and your goal is really to improve the data accessibility, understanding and comprehension of patients all over the globe. And that's going to take collaborations, right, within our industry. And it also going to take a deeper appreciation for what you call collective intelligence, right? Different minds, diversity of thought, people coming together to elevate the state of science. So thank you so much for that. I appreciate and I want to say too, I think what most people don't realize is that we're on the, the age of a new revolution. You know, this is going to be the new data economy, and this is supposed to be the largest distribution of wealth ever. And so I'm not really looking for a distribution. I'm looking for a redistribution so that those of us who are, you know, maybe not as, as up there can, 
can right. kind of have our place. Um, and I do live on social security disability. So that's a, a major factor for me, right? Is, is where is my data being used and, and how is it when, you know, as a patient, I struggle. Right, but those are the real stories that make your organization so impactful because you're sharing your own perspectives, right? Um, and you're trying to improve that knowledge base. So thank you for that. Um, my next question is a, a little bit related. So it's around mentorship. So uh, over the course of your career journey, as well as your personal journey, are there any notable mentors that have helped to shape who you are to date? Yes, yes, definitely mentors. So I talk about mentorship all the time and I mentor a few people myself because it has been so valuable. But three of my very, very like near and dear to my heart mentors, one is Amir uh, with oh, CNF Summit. Amir okay. has, has always been, you know, that person that will, you know, help me out. Paul Sims is another one. Uh, he used to host uh, the I for Pharma and now has moved on to inpatient health. Health. And then now my new co-partner in crime, he's one of my co-hosts on Clubhouse, Christoph Van Freitschem, and he runs an organization called Data for Patients out of Barcelona. So it's interesting, right? It's, it's these people who have been able to elevate my voice and teach me how to speak to industry, even in some instances where they're saying, no, 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 you said that all wrong, you know? And so it's, it's been that help and really that, that mentorship that has gotten me to where I am. And they are truly diverse. I mean, truly international. Everyone brings in a different perspective and that has helped to shape who you are. So thank I you. I just need more women. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And that's why I'm glad that we're having this conversation. I think there's plenty of room for diversity of thought. You know, different people from different backgrounds, different genders, uh, et cetera, can really help to elevate what we know around patient advocacy. And this is the age really for the patient ex experience, right? Patient are driving innovation. And that's why I'm really happy again to, to showcase you here. And, and speaking of innovation, are there any emerging technologies that you're excited about based on the ability to improve health literacy, access, or quality? So I'm really excited just overall in general about the decentralized clinical trials. I'm excited about the potential to come with the genome and really, you know, I, I see a whole vision of the world where we map our genomic data globally and share that information. So I'm, I'm just really looking forward to the future of, of medicine. Well, that's truly exciting. I think that decentralized trials are definitely a step in the right direction. And it ties into everything that we've talked around today, patient advocacy, clinical trial diversity, et cetera. Um, so now I have one more question for you. It's the easiest one so far. Do you okay. have any comments, any final comments or thoughts that you'd like to share with our audience before we wrap today? Yeah, I do. I, I think right now we're at a, a critical point, right? I think in healthcare, we've got all of us trying to push forward and we've seen through COVID just these amazing things that can happen in such a short amount of time if we just work together. And so I think the key here is through all of this is really that collaborative intelligence or collective intelligence, sorry, and that collaborative leadership. You know, I want to close with really quick. I like to tell people like the story of the pencil. You know, we all know what a pencil is, no matter where you are, what part of the world, you know, you know how to use it, you know how to hold it or, or how you're supposed to, you know, but it wasn't one person that built a pencil. And so we have to consider that all of these different people are putting into something that we're all going to recognize and something that's going to really, truly, hopefully in the end, help us all. Wow, uh, thank you for that inspirational note. I was born in Nigeria. It's funny when you talk about the history of the pencil, no one actually has a, there's no language about how to use a pencil, right? We all just sort of figure it out along the way. But it also speaks to everything that we've talked around today, collective intelligence and collaborative action. I think they really are the key and we appreciate very much your presence on the show. Thank you for sharing your thoughts, your insights, and your nuggets of wisdom with us today. Very much appreciate it. Well, thank you for having me. It was fun. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. I look forward to staying in touch with you. <laughs> All right. Take care, okay? Bye. Bye.